Hello, and welcome to another ScrapeOps video. Today, we'll be going over how to send post requests using Node.js request promise. These requests are often used to upload a file or to submit a completed web form, but they also serve a purpose in web scraping. Everything we'll be covering can be found in this article, Node.js request promise, how to send post requests, found on the ScrapeOps website. The link is in the description. Specifically, I'll be going over what a post request is and how it's used in web scraping, as well as the most common ways of sending post requests, which are as JSON data and as form data. Let's dive right into it. The post request method asks that a web server accept the data enclosed in the body of the request message, usually for storing it. When web scraping, we may need to send some information to the website before receiving the data we want. This could be providing a login in order to access the page we want, or interacting with the page somehow, like setting location and job type filters on LinkedIn. We usually provide this information in one of two ways, as JSON or form data. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a lightweight format for storing and transporting data. It's often used when sending data from a server to a web page. Here's an example of some data formatted with JSON. This is information usually required to sign up for a website, like name, email, username, and password, all in key value pairs. Form data is information provided by the user by interacting with an element in an HTML form, like a text input box, a button, or a checkbox. Here's an example of what form data would look like. We'll be able to format our code so we can input our information in a simpler way, however. Let's go through an example of each. A common scenario for using post requests is to send JSON data to an API endpoint. Doing so is pretty simple. Let's start with creating a request and passing in some options that we'll define in a minute. This code is just gonna log the response of the request to the console or catch and display any errors that get thrown. Now let's define the options that we'll be passing to the request. First, the method, which is post, and then the URL. This website is designed to return the information passed in the post request so that we can see what we're passing and where. Next, we'll set the body, which is the actual information we want to pass. Let's add the JSON formatted data we saw earlier. We'll also set this JSON value to true, and finally set our content type to application forward slash JSON, so that the program knows to interpret this data using the JSON format. Let's see what this looks like when we run it. And down here, you can see all of the data we passed in the post request. Another common use case for post requests is to send form data to an endpoint, like filling out a Google form. In order to do that, we need to make some changes to our code. Namely, we'll be using the form query instead of body. This is so we don't have to use this kind of formatting. Now we'll set the JSON value to false or simply remove it altogether. And we can also set the content type to application forward slash x dash www dash form dash URL encoded in order to let the program know to interpret the information we are passing it as URL encoded. This means that we'll be able to format our information in the same key value pairs we used for the JSON data. Let's run this and see what happens. As you can see, the information we passed was received successfully. And there you have it, how to send post requests using Node.js request promise. If you'd like to learn more about web scraping, be sure to check out the ScrapeOps web scraping playbook. Or you can check out one of our more in-depth guides, like how to scrape the web without getting blocked and the ethics of web scraping. The links to all that are in the description. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. Go ahead and comment which topics you'd like for us to cover next, and be sure to subscribe for more guides on all things web scraping. See you next time!